Here comes Yap Blanc. We're at this conference um, seance in uh, CalArts in Los Angeles, and uh, don't worry about not understanding uh, this intro. I met intro. this uh, writer, Madeline Gins, and I would like to present a short meditation of, on the title of one of her books. So what he said so far is, I, he's just he was in this room at the writer's house actually performing this, and he said, I, ju I was at a conference not too long ago, and I met Madeline Gins, and I'd like to, in honor of her, I'd like to perform. Uh, a riffing on the title of one of her books, and here it is. What the president will say and do. 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 What the president will say President will send what the 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 president will send And applause. I was one of those applauding. Thank you. That's Yap Blanc here at the writer's house doing what the president will say and do. Um, Anna, overall, what's he doing there? What's happening? Do I have, do I have to know that? I have no idea. <laughs> you have no idea? Okay. Well, we'll come back to well, you. Well, I love the. D I What's he doing? Oh, good. You haven't thought about this. I've thought. I've been trying to think about it. Okay. I've been listened to it like once a day for the last three days, trying to get ready for this. Okay. <laughs> and I still don't know. Okay. Well, um, we can come back to you. All right. Yeah. Come back. Yeah. All right, Emily. What's he doing? Yeah, well, what the president will say and do, what those words describe, is the most authoritative kind of speech available, the speech of actual authority of the president. And he's deconstructing the sound of that speech. His speech loses authority in a way that critiques, or you, we could imagine critiquing the model of authoritative speech that those... Authoritative speech. The president, presumably the president of the United States, is saying, when the president says something, what is the president saying in effect? When the president is saying he's speaking the truth, he's speaking um, speaking his own authority. It's a, the very yeah. speech is the speech of authority. The president lays authority on speech, and Chris, that that kind of speech is coherent, and it makes sense. Although there's a chance of electing a president who won't make a lot of sense, so we need to have Yap Blanc, Yap Blanc come back. But anyway, what's being said? What's going on here? Um, I mean, it seems to me like it's a kind of meditation on the idea of expressivity in a way, because the, even when the language breaks down, like as the sort of authenticity of what the president is saying breaks down, you still get a sense of meaning from the way he expresses that breakdown. Like you actually can feel the frustration coming through in a, in a way. Yeah, to, to say the least. <laughs> Jake Marmer, you care a lot about the sound of poetry. This is not a poem that's been written down. It's just a phrase that's being uttered. It depends on the performance, I guess you could say. Any thoughts on this? Yeah. Um, well, clearly you have a theme and variation going on here, right? Theme so and variation, the yes. And then, and then the, the, there are the variations. And what's interesting is where these variations are going, the, the trajectory, right, of the piece. And the way the trajectory is, is that uh, it seems like the vowels are basically getting sucked out of the piece. Right, right. right. So like, it's, it's mostly all consonants towards the end, and then e even that. And then, um, you know, there are like little mini themes that, that are starting to get thrown in there. I don't know on purpose or not, or whether that even matters, but then there's like the enda, there's enda, right? That, that becomes sort of like a new word. And sand or... Like all, all these things are like like in there, and and I think like the, the this like removal of vowels is is kind of powerful. Vowels are like the, the singing, the, the life, removal the, of vowels. The, 
Yeah. What, in a way, what's happening there, Jake, is that Yacht Blanc is swallowing the vowels and choking on the consonants, right? At the end... Consonants. <laughs> at the end, right. Or the consonants. <laughs> and at the end, there's this choking sound. All you hear is... You know, I can't do it. Um, he's quite a performer. Uh, so one chokes on what once were authoritative words. And one of the, one of the you know, Mod Po themes, I don't have a mug, but I have a cup. One of the Mod Po themes is essentially, you know, what the language will say and do. What the language will say and do. Cup, glass, this is it, right? The denotative action, the indexical action makes things work. Things work. And when you begin to feel less and less like the authority of the president's speech works to describe the actual world that we live in, which is not being described by what the president says and does, you have an artist, a poet, a sound poet come and deconstruct that to the point where it just sounds like mumbling garbage, nothing, yeah. And that's really, that's more denotative than, than the authoritative speech. Max, what would you say about this? Do you like this, Max? Uh, yeah, I like it okay enough. <laughs> um, I, it's, it's entertaining, and I think um, it's either Jake or Dave said something a moment ago uh, about, no, actually, sorry, I think it was, it was Chris. It, it gets better the more it falls apart, right, which I think is really, is really telling. Um, I think otherwise it sort of seems a little obvious. Um, but I don't know necessarily that like it is it is kind of a critique on on authoritative speech of say a presidential figure I suppose but I think it also is working a lot with the idea that like at least for the last like since you know since Nixon or Gerald Ford a lot of people have kind of considered the president to be a buffoon like all of them are sort of buffoons in a right. way and so right. it's it's really like it's very playful in that respect, and it's really yeah. working with that idea. So I don't know how much of a critique it is of like presidential power so much as it is just this kind of like, you know, we all sort of know already the president is a buffoon and he'll yeah. say and do whatever. Well, I think that's a know, really important hey. historical context because Madeline Ginz wrote this piece, the original piece, in I believe 1973. I might be wrong, but that's Nixon, right? And so we were all saying. Whatever the president says is a lie, and so right. you know, talk to the hand. There's really nothing going on there. But that was a fairly new idea, right? Because the authority of presidential speech, even when we had doubts, was thought of as authority. It's the end and be all of, of linguistic authority, right? And, and every child in the United States learns the power of the authority of words in, say, the Gettysburg Address, right. which completely crystallizes the, even, you know, Walt Whitman, who was very hopeful about American language, and even William Carlos Williams, very hopeful about American language. We, this Madeline Ginn's thing comes to the point where we're less hopeful about American language, and the connection between saying and doing is never there, and he pulls it apart. Um, T. De Los Reyes, Reyes says, um, uh, the more the language disintegrates, the more it has weight, which is a Mod Po kind of anthem, right? A Mod Po slogan is going back to Gertrude Stein. When the, when the language begins to break apart or be broken apart, it has more gravity. Um, so it's, it, is, it is interesting. Um, can we get the portable mic uh, to Eric to see if he has a comment? And let's go to Erica Kaufman for a thought on this. What do you think? Wasn't it Cage who said we wanted to, he wanted to make English less understandable? Yes. Isn't that Cage? K John Cage. He went around mm -hmm. the country trying to make English less understandable because when it's understandable, we begin to do things bad to people. We begin to hurt people with the language. So in effect, he says he was demilitarizing the language. I think that's a cousin to this gesture. Sure. Erica Kaufman, your thoughts on Yacht Blanc? I mean, I think that you just, you just said what I was going to say. Um, uh oh, I'm getting that echo. But um, I'm thinking about again Cage and also the idea of um, the way that you can use your voice in order to 
make new sounds and reassert ownership over language. Mm. Yeah, uh, I think uh, Karen Elenia, uh says the same thing in her Twitter uh, comment. Uh, and she says that Blanc reminds her of what it was like when she first read Stein. You know, makes, makes her uneasy, but it's a kind of starting over. Um, the same as uh, Tracy Morris, too. I mean, yes, so, like, many people have, have mentioned Tracy obvious, Morris here. Yeah. Yeah. For those of you who are new to ModPo, Tracy Morris is someone we encounter, who is really a, a musical poet, a sound poet. We encounter her in uh, week 10, at the very end of the course, and she seeks to break down standard phrases. Right, exactly the same way, actually. Um, Eric, your thought on this? I think this kind of poem is open enough to really allow room for imaginative suggestion. I have a very strong imaginative response to this, which is a kind of very short Beckett play or a very short Pinter play where you get the sense that someone's just turned to our own correspondent to find out what the president will say or do. And that correspondent reaches a really deep crisis of humanity, like what would it be for me to say this? So instead of being able to say it, the whole process breaks down and he muffles himself or herself into the point where language doesn't quite exist anymore. And there's more this, this grunt, like am I free? Am I, what is this? What can I do with this situation? And there's this kind of political repression built into it because of the way information is managed and processed and, and regurgitated. And, and there's some deep part of the speaker that's saying, no, you won't do that. You'd rather bark like a dog. Right. And that's my response. That's not necessarily anything to do with something that's always in the poem for every reader, but the poem left enough room for me to do that work. That's very well put. Um, a couple of comments from the Facebook page, and then we'll move on to, the, our, to our third and final poem. Um, uh, Rakhana Bav, or Bave, and I'm sorry, Rakhana, if I'm mispronouncing your name. I agree with what Al said, but I also wonder if it could reflect the sentiment of the audience, citizens, and not the president, um, where people questioning what the president will say and do are slowly and consistently being stifled until one would think they are delirious, a sort of reflection on the political situation in a lot of countries. Basically, we wind up choking on our own civic discourse. Um, uh, Misty Coper writes, hello, Misty. Um, when, you, uh, when you can still understand Yacht Blanc, he places great emphasis on say and do. They are separate things. They're disparate. And of course, at the end, they're the same. That's a good point. Um, and Vandana Basin says, well, for me, this is a completely new form of poem I have learned today. It's interesting. This is what we hope in Mod Po, that people will think, is this a poem? Is this performance guy a, po a poet? And Jim Bumgarner, hello, Jim. Uh, welcome back. I think the discussion regarding reader technique misses the point of the poem. Wow. And he didn't elaborate, so I'm not sure what, <laughs> but maybe he can, he can say more. Um, so we're going to listen to the very end of the poem again and then move on to the next poem. What the president will say, 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 when language has been corrupted, right, when it has been completely corrupted, it's wrong, say experimental poets, say the, many of the Mod Po poets, it's wrong to reproduce traditional ways of meaning, if language has been emptied of its sense, if language doesn't work anymore, if language is full of lies, of social lies, then how dare we construct a poetry that pretends as if the language is intact and meaning making is working. 
That's just the most basic way to think about this. And he's performing an extreme version of, so, so physically hard to do, I've seen him do this, of the performance of language's implosion inside the mouth and inside the throat to the point where the meaninglessness of political discourse prevents us from even saying it. And that is a political critique. So here we have a musical poet who's putting on what is, I mean, and, and, and Max was right in describing that, that history. Um, to the, it's to the point, as Max pointed out, that we all know it's kind of a cliche that political speech is empty. But here he is kind of performing it in a way like, you know, this is a season in which political speech, uh, not, not just uh, Donald Trump, so I said Donald Trump in a Mod Po webcast today. Not just Donald Trump, but particularly Donald Trump, of course. Everybody knows, even his supporters say, well, he doesn't mean any of that. And he doesn't tr he's not trying to say truthful things. He's just talking, and I kind of like that freedom. Well, I think Jacques Blanc is saying more or less the opposite, that if you really listen to that kind of political speech, you're going to hear someone choking to, almost to death on political discourse.